Hi students, now we are going to see about the wireless networks unit 4 which is the wireless wide area network. Let us see the overview. The overview of UTMS Terrestrial Radio Access Network, UMTS Core Network Architecture, 3G MSC, 3G SGSN and 3G GGSN and its firewall and DNS, DXCP, high speed downlink packet access, then LTE network architecture and its protocols. Let us see the wireless network architecture perceptive, which is nothing but the wide area network, that is WAN. Next is LAN, local area network. Next is your PAN, that is personal area network. The wide area network is ranged up to 2500 meters, that is GSM and GPRS. Next is your local area network, ranged up to 100 meters, that is 802.11b. PAN is nothing but personal area network which consists of low power short range networks reached up to 10 meters. Example the Bluetooth and IR rails. Here comes the comparison of PAN, LAN and WAN. The PAN as I said before it is a personal area network where the data rate speed is 1 to 20 MPBOs. Next is your local area network which is 11 to 54 MPBOs. Next is your wide area network where the data rate is 9 to 144 kbps. The distance covered by PAN is 10 meters whereas LAN is 100 meters and WAN is 2500 meters. These are the wireless internet technologies. Now we can see the data rates of the wireless where the devices, the web phone users 9.6 kbps pages which uses 14.4 kbps and pages will be using 19.2 kbps and the handhelds will be using 128 kbps and the handhelds using the wireless LAN will be using 11 mbps now let us see the two 3g radio access schemes which are going to identify to support the different spectrum scenarios the enhanced data rates for gsm that is the edge which with the higher level modulation in a 200 kilohertz TDMA channel is based upon the plug-in trans receiver equipment. Thereby it allows the migration of existing bands in small spectrum segments. The main thing is UMTS that is Universal Mobile Telecommunication Services is a new radio access network based upon 5 megahertz WCDM wing that is wide CDMA and optimized for efficient support of 3G services. The UTMS can be used both in new and existing data. Next comes the evolution from 2G to 3G. The primary requirements of 3G networks are the fully specified and worldwide valid and the major interfaces should be standardized and open and supports multimedia and of all its components wide band radio access and the services must be independent from radio access technologies and is not limited by network infrastructure. The standardization of WCDMAs and UT UMTS. Here are the main parameters where the first one is your multiple access method that is DSCDMA. Then duplexing method here it is used is either the FTD or TDD. The base station synchronization is usually the synchronous operation. The channel operation is 5 megahertz and chip rate will be 3.84 mega chipsets. Frame length will be 10 milliseconds and the service multiplexing will be multiple service. Multi rate concept will be variable spreading factor and detection will be coherent and multi user detection and smart antennas can be used in op optional in implementation. Next comes the UMTS. UMTS stands for Universal Mobile Telecommunication Service. The UMTS is a third generation 3G broadband packet based transmission of the text, digitized voice, video and multimedia and data rates up to 2 megabytes per second. UMTS offers a consistent set of services to mobile computers and phone users and no matter where they are located in the world. The UMTS is based upon the global system for mobile that is GSM communication standard. Once UMTS is fully available, the computer and phone users can be 
constantly attached to our internet wherever they travel and they roam and will have the same set of capabilities. Users will have access through a combination of terrestrial and satellite transmissions. The MTS system architecture, these are the diagram where the main part is the UE that is user terminal, UTRN that is U-turn, then CN that is the core network. The main components of UTRN is node B and RNC and C and the core network consists of G GSN, GMSE, SGSN and its components. Let us see the functioning of the UMTS system architecture in detail. The basic UTMS, UMTS architecture consists of UTRAN, the circuit switched core, the packet switched core, where the circuit switched core consists of a voice calls and SMS and the packet switched core consists of a packet data network. Here comes the UMTS barrier services where it consists of a terminal equipment and mobile terminal, UTRN, CN that is core network and CN gateway. The UMTS consists of a mobile terminal, UTRN, CN and CN gateway. These are combined to a end to end services where it is connected to a terminal equipment that is local barrier services and here it is connected to a external barrier services at the end, other end. The radio access barrier services and CN services has been connected to a backbone network service and the radio barrier service which is connected to a access services that is it can be either FTT or TDD as shown in the figure and there is a physical barrier services at the bottom. Now let us see the UMTS QoS classes. Here comes the classes that is fundamental characteristics between the conventional class, streaming class, interactive class and background. Now the example of the conventional classes are nothing but the voice, video telephony and video games. And the example of the streaming class is nothing but the streaming multimedia. And the example of interactive class is nothing but the web browsing network games. And it, for the background, the example will be the background download of Emails. Now the fundamental characteristics differ from the PESA version time that is the relation between the information entities of the stream and the request response and the destination is not accepting the data within the certain time. These are the fundamental characteristics of each and every classes, the traffic classes. Next comes the U-Tron that is the radio network subsystems RNSS the RNS has two main logical elements we are going to see the logical elements that is node B and RNC RNC is nothing but the radio network channel the RNS is responsible for radio resources and transmission reception in a set of cells a cell sector is one coverage area served by a data broadcast channel next comes the UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access Network Overview. Now let us see the direct sequence spread spectrum. It consists of user 1 to user n users where the spreading of the data will happen where the wide band of frequency is used and the data are traveled. And in the receiver side, the de-spreading of the data has been happening and the narrow band signal is used and the information is retrieved. Similarly, we are going to use the multipath delivery that is delay profile that is used to check the wideband and narrowband spectrum and we are going to receive the signal with the help of this spreading and despreading. Now let us learn the UTRAN and the set of radio network subsystems where it consists of a main node B and RNC. As I said before, the node B is responsible, node B and RNC is responsible for radio resources and transmission reception set of cells. The UTRON, that is UMTS terrestrial radio access network, consists of two distinct elements, that is your base station node B, radio network controller RNC, and one RNC and one plus node B is all grouped together to form a radio network sublayer 
and the handles all the radio related functionalities the maximization of the components of the peers and cs data handling will take place next comes the responsibilities of rnc the main responsibility of the rnc is the intra utron handover and macro diversity combining and splitting of lab data streams next one is a frame synchronization which is used for synchronization purpose and the radio resource management is a main responsibility of rnc and the other one is the outer loop power control and low interface user panel setup and serving rns and the frame selection distribution functionality and emts radio link control and termination of mac rlc rs and lab user client protocol termination utron the logical roles of rnc that is controlling rnc that is node b as shown in the figure the node b and ue that is the user entities are connected with the help of the interfaces either it can be lu lur and the serving rnc s r n c the l the l i u link of user data radio resource control signaling performs the l2 processing of data to and from the radio interface that is rm operations and it had performed operations such as the hand over outer loop power control etc the drift rnc that is d rnc performs macro diversity combining and splitting will be handled by this next one it consists of a umts system architecture the umts system architecture consists of a mobile station ms the mobile station is nothing but the mobile which consists of radio interface service control and user interface the radio access network ran that is radio specific functions and the core network cn consists of radio independent functions which is used for transport mobility management subscriber data service control and is used for emts subscriber identity model and it supports authorized access to a network next utron logic interfaces The Utron logic interfaces is designed so that the layers and planes are logically independent of each other, and it requires the parts of protocol structures can be used in future without affecting other parts. The protocol architecture consists consists of two main layers: that is, radio network layer (RNL) and transport network layer (TNL). The basic UMTS architecture consists of UTRN. that is circuit switched code voice calls and smps and it consists of a packet switched code packet data network the protocols used in this interface are radio access network application part dch frame protocol access link control application part message transfer part and signaling atm adaptation layer for network to network interface next one consists of a core network which consists of cs domain that is consists of a mobile switching center msc a switching cs transactions visitor location register b r b l r and holds a copy of a visiting users service profile and precise of of the us location then gateways msc the switch that connects to external networks next comes the ps domain the serving gprs supports sgsn and gateway gprs supports the function similar to a gmsc next comes umts core network architecture umts core network architecture consists of cs entity for providing voice and cs data services and a ps entity for providing packet based services The logical architecture offers a clear separation between the CS domain and the PS domain. The CS domain consists the functional entities, mobile switching center, MSC, and gateway MSC, and the PS domain comprises the functional entities such as the serving GPRS support node, that is SGSN, gateway GPRS support node GGSN, domain name service DNS, dynamic. host configuration protocol dhcp and serve a 
and the packet chain charging gateway and firewalls here comes the circuit which consists of umts core network and consists of switch circuit switched and utrn and ssn and the packet data network while it interfaces consists of lu and gi and isup interfaces next comes the uh, architecture diagram where we can see the connections of internet to a laptop and to a building center and to sap and dns and to many naming servers once you browse the internet the information from the laptop will be sent to dns and from that to the firewall that is from the firewall it is given to a packet charging gateway and from the gateway it is connected to various other networks and that is stp scp and then it is given to a billing center and to utron and to mobile circuits and finally to a mobile systems the 3g msc 3g msc is the main cn element and to provide the cs services the 3g msc also provide the necessary controlling and corresponding signaling interfaces includes signal system seven and 3g msc provide the interconnection to external networks like psdn and isdn the following functionality is provided by 3g msc that is the mobile management handles the attach authentication updates to a hlr that is sn srns relocation and inter symbol handover then it comes the cell management it handles the call setup the messages from to the ue that is the supplementary services it handles calls related to supplementary services just call waiting etc next comes the cs data services it provides data adaptation and message translation for a circuits more data services just fax then comes ss7 map and ran app interfaces where it is able to complete originating or terminating cells in a network in interaction with others entities of a mobile network atm aal2 connection to utron it is used for transportation of our user plane traffic across the lu interfaces and higher rates cs data rates may be supported using a different adaptation layer the short message services sms this functionality allows the user to send and receive the sms data to and from the smps interworking msp next comes the vlr functionality the vlr is a database that may be located within the 3g msp and can serve as a intermediate storage for subscribers data in order to support the subscriber mobility next comes the operation administration and maintenance urgent functionality next comes the 3g SGSN is a main core network element for PNs, PS services where it also provides the appropriate signaling and data interfaces including the connection to a IP based network to both the 3G, GSN and the other models. Also the session management that is the handling the session set up bringing the message from and to the UE and GSN operation admission control is the main function. Next comes the 3G, GSN provides the interworking with the external PS network it is connected to with the SGSN through IP based network the GGSN may optionally support an SS7 interface with a HRL to handle the mobile terminated packet sessions the 3G GGSN provides the following functions that is a maintain information location at SGSN level and gateway between UMTS packet gate network and external data networks and gateway specific access method to internet next comes the firewall the firewall is nothing but network security device that grants or rejects the network access to traffic flow between an untrusted zone and a trusted zone the firewall acts as a traffic cop in a network as all the communication should fall, flow through it and where the traffic is granted or rejected access Firewall protect the service providers backbone data network from